Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is Two Irises, Part 2. In Part 2, I darkened the shadows on the flowers, added some more details to them, and then I took a look at my color wheel to give me some ideas for the background. I used colors that were complementary to those in the flowers to create the background. I hope you'll like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. My next challenge is to decide if I want a background at all, and if so, what kind of colors I want in the background that would set off the colors of the flowers. I decide to go with the background. I use my color wheel to see what looks good with this particular shade of pinkish purple and mauve. I decide on some yellow greens to complement the purples, as well as some blue greens to complement the oranges that are in the flower as well. The greens themselves are the complementary color for the red shade family. So I'm just starting with filling in some shapes of leaves and some colors that I think will look nice against the edging of the flower and set them off. Give a little accent color to the paler petals. And to do that, I will have to get darker. And I decide to go with a blue sky on top. The leaf shapes are being formed and next I have to decide what do I want to use to fill in the white areas. I could leave them white, but at this point now I feel like the background needs to have color all around it. The strong darks really do add a striking accent against the paler flowers. But I am going back into the flowers and making more work in folds and little veins that run through such flowers.
adding these darks I do believe makes these flowers a little stronger for the composition to stand up to the darks that I've put in the background. I am continuing to add to the folds and the accents in the folds on different parts of the flower petals at this point. And I'm adding little textures to the orangish yellow centers of the irises, the parts that are known as their beards. Going back to deepen the contrast even more for the shadowed areas of the irises. So there's about three glazes of color in those areas right now. That shape didn't work, so I'm taking it out and making it part of the background. Painting right over top of the pink. And if your color is bright enough, of course it will cover completely. Back up to the sky. I am brightening my blue and filling in the remaining areas where it was white. I'm using primarily a cobalt blue for this part of the painting. And I decide to add a very good deep tone for the last remaining white area of the background. And that does seem to set off the lighter petal at the bottom of the flower. These flowers have markings in the front of them. And it took me some time to try to get the markings down but then blend them in so that they looked natural. For my strongest darks, I am mixing Hooker's Green Dark and one of my favorite staples, which is Indigo. Makes a nice, rich, deep turn.
but it's not a black, so it looks natural. Another glaze of color for the blue sky. And the petals then stand out a lot more strongly, especially the pale ones. Blending my shadows. At this point, I'm close to being done. Throwing a couple more splashes of color. That's Quinn Magenta. Such a nice color. The name is a lot longer, but it's a little hard to say. So we'll just call it Quinn. little bit of final accenting work to make those bottom petals stand out more against the background. Finishing up, final blending, evaluation of the sides. Putting a bit more accent work on the right side flower. and cleaning up an edge I see at the very top. It's done, and I find a likely place to sign it right along the leaf. I hope you enjoyed the two iris video. Also, hoping you'll to subscribe and ring the bell to get notices for future videos that I post. In the description below, you'll find links to the materials I like to use, my Facebook art page, my blog, and art products that I make. Comments are a big help, too. I'll see you next painting.